So in a previous video, I've shown you how you can trigger automations manually by right clicking and selecting something from the automate menu. And you create these and manually assign them to each individual file that you want to do. That's great when you're doing one offs every once in a while you're using a file. But if you were going to go through 100 files and bulk do that, that's going to take you all day. So we're going to take a look at a different automation that looks at the status. Once the status changes to whatever status we, we indicate, it will then set a trigger off to go and do the same workflow. So we're not doing it manually. We're doing it based on the content of a specific column. So in the example I've got here, I've got these files here. I've got statuses set up and I've got the assigned to. What I want to do is when I change the status from in progress to send to faculty, to automatically kick off, send an email off to whoever his name happens to be in the side there. So I'm not going to do it one at a time. It's just going to bulk do it. Now, a couple of quick things to understand or to be aware of. I'm working in a document library. You can also use this in a Microsoft list, formerly a SharePoint list. Those both will work with this trigger. The thing to remember, though, is that the library and the list both have to be saving versions. If you're working in a SharePoint library, this automatically happens anyways. So th that, that piece is on. You might have to check on your list to make sure the versions are checked on. Just go up in the top hand corner where the gear is up there and select list settings. In this case, you can do it also for um, document library settings, but those should be turned on automatically. Okay, so let's go through it. We're gonna manually build this up. So I'm gonna go into Power Automate. I'm gonna go and create a flow. The flow is going to be a automated cloud flow. And I'm just going to go right and hit skip all this and it opens up a blank canvas for me. First thing we should always do is make sure to put the name in there. So I always call, you know, try to put everything together. So I'm going to call it social work number four and it's going to be uh, send email to and send email based on status changed to send to faculty. Don't worry about the spelling. Okay, so we want a SharePoint list. And, and as we go through these, we start off by indicating what is the uh, application I'm gonna work in. So I always start off with SharePoint. And the trigger we're looking for is called when an item or file is modified. So when an item or file is modified. So an item it's talking about a SharePoint list, a file is talking about a document library. We then have to go and indicate which library we're talking about or what, sorry, which website we're talking about or SharePoint site. So there's our Power Automate training, then which document library we're working on. I'm working on Social Work One right now. So once I've done that, I now want to go into SharePoint. So and I'm going to get information about that. Oops, let me spell SharePoint correctly. So let's try and get, uh, it's called Get Changes. When it, for an item or file. Same thing, we have to indicate which SharePoint site we're working on, which document library we're working on. And then uh, it needs an ID. So we're gonna throw in ID here. Now, remember we talked about versioning. This is how it, it's SharePoint takes a look and, or Power Automate takes a look and says, how do I know what the next version is or what is the most recent, what's been changed? So basically we look at triggers. And I just need to go into here and, and down in my dynamic content, I just type in the word trigger. And I can see here, trigger window start token and end token. This basically says, this is when it's, uh, this is the previous change. This is a change now coming down. What's been changed? This is how it does a comparison. So we're gonna do our start trigger there. We'll go into here and we'll put in our end trigger. And that's it for that. Next step then. Well, the next step is I don't want it to act on everything because that's what we set up right now is like any file that pops up and has a change to it, I want to be notified. We want to specifically say if the status just changed, not because someone went and changed and updated the information in, in the actual file, which is a change or anything uh, assigned a person to it. We don't want all of those to be hitting us. We want to specifically say, hey, only certain stuff. So we throw in what's called a control. Basically, it's filters. Now, what we want to do is we have a column there called status. So I'm going to click on there and just type in status. Status. And if I go down here, status value is what we want. So when that column status 
is equal to, and we throw in whatever, put in whatever status we want, in which this case is send to faculty, faculty, that's basically the filter, all right? So it's only going to look for those. When it finds that, that's where the yes part comes in, what do we want? We want to send an email out. This is pretty much what we've done in the past, so I'm not going to spend a lot of time on that. Um, you can look at the other video on this, but I'm just going to go in there. We're going to send an email and I'm going to use the name of the person that's in that column. So I'm just going to go in here and put in name. So where is, so this was the, the assigned to, actually assigned to is what I want. Let's back up here. So assigned to email, because that's only emails can work in there. So we're going to do that assigned email. So it goes to whoever the name is. Um, the subject line can be, you know, change your file for, and then I could go in and get the name of the file. Name. So there's the name of the file or item. And in the body of the message, I'm going to just basically, I can put in whatever message I want, but I'm just going to throw a link in here for now. And I need to use, um, depending on the browser, I might it might recognize the link. If not, I can also use an ahref in HTML code and set that all up. So let's go ahead and hit save this. So there's all our information here. Now I'm going to do a test. So let's run this test here. I'm going to manually hit the test. It says now go and make a change. So I'm going to go over to here. I'm going to change this first item here from in progress to send to faculty. I'm going to hit the exit here. It's going to change. Yes, it is. Now these flows can take a little longer than normal. Here we can see your flow is running. Now it's going through the steps. And remember, if I was to select 100 files and change that, it would go through all those steps. So keep in mind, this could take a long time. But because we've done the test here, we can actually go through the steps with three other checkboxes there. I always like to make sure that the expression there is true in email. So that means it ran. Let's take a look. There it is. Change your file. There is the link. Again, you can customize all that. But there, you've now been able to go through and change all of these. So I'm going to go just to show you. There's these three items here. I'm just going to change them all here to send to faculty. So let's say it's 100 of them. And we'll leave that. And as I mentioned before, sometimes this takes a little longer. I'm going back to the, uh, the top level of my flow here. And this is, I can see where everything's running. And I just have to keep refreshing every once in a while. And again, a hundred of these would take a long time, but it's still faster than trying to do it manually. But in the end, you're gonna end up in your email with a bunch of these files.